In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus teaches us how to pray. And in the process, He gives us a powerful prayer that speaks to the heart of our struggle as human beings. It's a prayer that acknowledges the reality of temptation and evil in the world, and it seeks God's help in overcoming it. That prayer is found in Matthew 6, verse 13, as part of the Lord's Prayer. Matthew 6, verse 13, which reads, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In this prayer, we find the recognition that we cannot overcome temptation on our own, meaning that we need God's help and guidance to lead us away from temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Today, as we continue our venture into the Lord's Prayer, we will explore the meaning and the significance of the words, do not lead us into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Matthew 6.13 is a verse that comes at the end of what is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer which is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in response to their request to be taught how to pray. The context of this verse is within Jesus' teaching on the prayer and fasting in Matthew 6, where he gives instructions on how to pray. He gives warning against the hypocritical prayers of the religious leaders of his day. In Matthew 6, from verse 9 through to verse 13, Jesus provides his disciples with a model prayer that emphasizes the importance of acknowledging God's sovereignty and asking for His provision, His forgiveness, and His protection. This prayer also includes a request for God to lead us away from temptation and deliver us from the evil one. So the context of Matthew 6 verse 13 is a call to pray with humility and sincerity, recognizing our dependence on God for our every need including protection from temptation and the devil's schemes. It's a reminder that as we pray, we're acknowledging God's power and authority over all things and our need of His guidance and protection in the face of temptation and evil. Temptation is often depicted as a force that is opposed to God's will and it seeks to lead people away from the righteousness of God. The book of Matthew in particular offers a rich exploration of the nature of temptation and the ways in which it can be overcome through faith and perseverance. Matthew 6.13, which is part of the Lord's Prayer, is a prayer that Jesus taught His disciples as a model prayer on how to approach God in every prayer. In this prayer, Jesus specifically addresses the issue of temptation by asking God to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now this phrase acknowledges that temptation is a universal human experience that can lead people astray and cause them to act in ways that are contrary to God's will. Temptation can come in many forms and can be related to a variety of different aspects of human experience. For example, in the book of Genesis, uh, we see Adam and Eve tempted by the devil through a forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Now this temptation is related to the desire for knowledge and for power, as well as the temptation to disobey God's command. In the New Testament, we see Jesus himself tempted by the devil in the wilderness, with the devil offering him power and authority in exchange for his allegiance. Other examples of temptations include the temptation to indulge in sexual immorality, the temptation to seek wealth and material possessions, and the temptation to give into fear and anxiety rather than trusting God's provision and protection. You see, these various forms of temptation reflect the diverse range of human experience and the ways in which we can be drawn astray from God's will. Despite the pervasive nature of temptation, However, the Bible offers hope and encouragement for those who seek to resist it. In the book of 1 Corinthians, for example, Paul writes, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to. But with the temptation, you will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. This passage suggests that while temptation is indeed a universal human experience, it is not an insurmountable obstacle. Rather, God is faithful and will provide a way for us to overcome it if we are willing to seek His help and guidance. And this can take many forms, from relying on the support of others and other believers and drawing on the power and the prayer and scripture to resist temptations. Ultimately, the key to overcoming temptation lies in developing a strong and a vibrant relationship with God. And as we draw closer to Him, we become better equipped to discern His will and resist the force that seeks to lead us astray. Now, this requires a consistent and intentional effort to cultivate a life of faith and obedience marked by prayer, worship, and service to others. So the Bible affirms that temptation is indeed a universal human experience that can take many different forms. However, it also offers hope and encouragement for those who seek to resist temptation and remain faithful to God's will. By relying on His strength and guidance, we can overcome the forces that seek to lead us astray and live our lives that reflect God's love and grace. What about the consequences of giving into temptation? You know that feeling that arises within us when we are drawn towards something that we know that we should be avoiding? It can be something very small or as serious as engaging in immoral behavior. But no matter what form it takes, giving into temptation can have serious consequences. The Bible warns us about the danger of giving into temptation. In the book of James 1, verse 13 through to 15, we read, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, it gives birth to death. These words should give us a pause because they remind us that giving into temptation can have serious consequences both in this life and the next. When we allow our desire to lead us down the wrong path, we open ourselves up to the world of pain and suffering and regret. We may even find ourselves caught in a cycle of addiction or engaging in behaviors that harm ourselves or others. We may experience the loss of relationships or jobs or other opportunities that we value. And perhaps most importantly, we may find ourselves moving further and further away from God's will in our lives. But the consequences of giving into temptation are not just earthly, they have an eternal ramification as well. You see, when we give into temptation, we distance ourselves from God and His plan for our lives. We turn away from the one who created us, loves us and desires the very best for us. We choose our own way over His, and in doing so, we risk losing the ultimate price, which is eternal life with Him. So how do we avoid giving into temptation? Well, the first step is to recognize the power that temptation holds over us. We need to acknowledge that our own weaknesses and vulnerabilities and take steps to protect ourselves from the things that we know will lead us down the wrong path. And we may need to seek the help of others, whether it's be through accountability partners or counseling or other forms of support to help us overcome our temptations. We also need to cultivate a strong relationship with God. Now this means spending time in prayer, reading His Word and seeking His guidance and wisdom in all areas of our lives. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us resist temptation and to give us the strength that we need to live according to God's will. We need to be willing to make sacrifices as well for the sake of our faith. Now this may mean saying no to things that we know are harmful or sinful, even when it's difficult. It may mean stepping away 
from certain relationships or environments that are not in line with God's plan for our lives. It may also mean enduring hardship or persecutions for the sake of our faith. Friends, the consequences of giving in to temptation are real and serious, but we do not need to face them alone because God is with us and He offers us the strength, the guidance and the wisdom that we need to resist temptation and to live according to His will. So let us turn to Him and seek His face and trust in His grace as we strive to overcome the temptations and to live the life that He has called us to. So we know that temptation is a serious problem in our lives, and we know that God can help us overcome the temptations. But what does overcoming our temptation look like? Or what do we do to ensure that we can fully gain God's attention and His help? You see, in the Bible, we see many examples of individuals who faced temptations and overcame it with the help of God. One such example is Jesus Himself. In the book of Matthew, we read about how Jesus was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. But instead of giving in to temptation, Jesus resisted Satan's advances by relying on the Word of God. He said in Matthew 4 verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. By relying on the power of God's Word, Jesus was able to overcome the temptation that was put before him. And likewise, in the book of James, we read about how we can overcome temptation. James writes, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, the key to overcoming temptation is to submit ourselves to God's will and rely on his strength to resist the devil's advance. So how can we overcome temptation with the help of God? Here's a couple of things that we can do. Firstly, is to recognize the power that temptation holds over us. I mean, we need to be honest with ourselves about our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities and acknowledge that we cannot overcome temptations on our own. We need God's help. Now, I know in my own life, there have been many times where I've tried to resist the temptations without acknowledging that I need God's help and it never worked, it would never end well for me. And if I do succeed, it will only last for a short time. Before you know it, I'm back to it again. And that's because I'm trying to do it on my own strength, overlooking the fact that my opposition is much stronger than I am. But God is waiting to offer His help when we call on Him. Another great way to help us overcome temptation is Acknowledging that we need prayer in our lives. We need to ask Him for strength, guidance and wisdom. We need to resist temptation. We need to ask Him to reveal to us the root cause of our temptation so that we can address them and find healthier ways to cope with our struggles. Whether it be the temptations to indulge in unhealthy habits or gossip about others, or to act in ways that are not in line with God's will? Temptation is a powerful force that can easily lead us astray. But we have a weapon at our disposal that can help us resist temptation and stay on the path that God has set for us, and that is prayer. In the book of James, we read that prayer, the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. This verse reminds us that prayer is not just a passive act, but a powerful weapon that can help us overcome the temptation. Prayer is powerful because it is a direct line of communication with our God. Through prayer, we can lay our burdens at His feet and ask for His guidance and His forgiveness. When we pray, we are acknowledging our need for God and our dependence on Him for every aspect of our lives. And now this acknowledgement of our dependence on God is the first step in resisting temptation. When we pray, we're also inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives. Now the Holy Spirit is our helper and guide and He empowers us to overcome temptation. In John 14 verse 26, Jesus promised His disciples, but when the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said to you. So when we pray, we're inviting the Holy Spirit to guide us and remind us of God's truth. You see, prayer is also effective because it helps us to focus on God's will for our lives. So when we pray, we are aligning our hearts with God's and seeking His guidance in every aspect of our lives. Now, as we focus on God's will, we are less likely to be swayed by the temptations of the world. So how can we use prayer as a weapon to resist the temptation? Well, the first step is to make prayer a daily habit, setting aside time each day to pray and seek God's guidance. Now, we can pray for strength to resist temptation. We can pray for wisdom to discern God's will in our lives. We can pray for guidance in every aspect of our lives. The second step is to pray specifically for the areas in our lives where we struggle with temptation. We need to be honest with God about our weaknesses and vulnerability and ask Him to help us overcome them. We can pray for God to reveal to us the root cause of our temptation and for Him to give us the strength to resist the devil's advances. Now, the third step is to pray for others who may be struggling with temptation as well. Now, when we pray for others, we're not only helping them, but we're also strengthening our own faith. When we pray for friends and our family members and even our enemies, asking God to guide them and help them overcome the temptations that they're facing. My friends, prayer is a powerful weapon that can help us resist temptation and stay on the path that God has set for us. And so I encourage you to make prayer a daily habit and pray specifically for the areas in your life where you are struggling with, with temptation. Let us also pray for others who may be struggling with temptation, asking God to guide them and strengthen their faith as well. As we rely on the power of prayer, we can overcome temptation and live in accordance with God's will. The third step is to immerse ourselves in God's Word. You know, by reading and studying the Bible and allow its truth to guide our thoughts and our actions. As we meditate on God's Word, we will find that our minds are renewed and that we are better equipped to resist temptation. The Bible also provides us with practical advice on how to resist temptation. For example, in 1 Corinthians, in chapter 10, verse 13, we read, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. You see, this verse reminds us that God is with us and that He will provide a way for us to resist temptation. We can also find practical advice on how to resist temptation in verses like Ephesians 6 verse 11, which tells us, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil. So how can we make reading and studying the Bible a regular part of our lives? Well, like prayer, setting aside time each day to read and study the Bible will also help us a lot. And this can be done through either a personal devotion or Bible study or attending a church service, we can also use Bible apps and podcasts or online resources to make the Word of God more accessible. Another important thing to remember is our need to approach the Bible with an open heart, asking God to reveal His truth to us. Now we can pray for wisdom and understanding as we read and ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us in our study. Finally, we need to apply what we learn from the Bible to our lives. You know, as James 1 verse 22 tells us, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. So as we apply the principles and the teachings of the Bible in our lives, we will become more equipped to resist temptation and live in accordance with God's will. So friends, reading and studying the Bible is also a powerful tool that can help us overcome temptations. It gives us a clear understanding of God's will, provide us with examples of those who have overcome the temptation, 
and offers practical advice on how to resist it. So let's make reading and studying the Bible a regular part of our lives and let us apply it, apply its teachings into our daily lives as well. Now, as we do so, we will become more equipped to resist temptation and live in accordance with God's will. Finally, we need to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives, He empowers us to overcome temptation and live in accordance to God's will. So it's important to trust in the Holy Spirit to give us the strength that we need to resist the devil in this temptation. Now, I'm sure we're all aware of the fact that we are not immune to temptation. The devil seeks to lead us astray from the path of righteousness and into sin. But we're not left alone to face temptation. We have been given a powerful ally in the Holy Spirit who can help us overcome temptation and live holy and upright lives according to God's will. In the Gospel of John, Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit to be our helper and our guide. In John 14 verse 26, He says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you everything that I have told you. The Holy Spirit is not just a force or a power, but it's a personal being who comes alongside us, within us, to help us in our weaknesses. One of the ways the Holy Spirit helps us overcome temptation is by convicting us of sin. Uh, we look at a verse in John 16, verse 8. Jesus says, When the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. So when we are tempted, the Holy Spirit convicts us of the wrongness of the temptation and reminds us of God's standard and righteousness. This conviction helps us resist the temptation and turn away from sin. Now the Holy Spirit also empowers us to resist temptation. In Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus tells His disciples, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You see, the same power that enabled the early Christians to spread the gospel throughout the world is also available to us today. And when we are tempted, we can call on the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to resist and overcome the temptations. The Holy Spirit also guides us into all truth. In John 16 verse 13, Jesus says, But when He, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. The Holy Spirit helps us discern what is right and what is wrong and guides us to make wise decisions when we are faced with temptations. So how can we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives to help us overcome temptation? Well, first we must have a personal relationship with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is given to us as a result of our faith in Jesus, as our Lord and our Savior. We can repent of our sins and invite Jesus into our hearts and receive the Holy Spirit within us and be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and be willing to obey the Holy Spirit, prompting when He convicts us of sins and guides us into making decisions. Friends, we have been given a powerful ally in the Holy Spirit to help us overcome the temptations. He convicts us of sin. He empowers us to resist temptation and guides us into all truth. And by cultivating a life of prayer and being sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we can become more and more like Jesus. So as you pray the Lord's Prayer and say, Do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. It reminds us of the reality of temptation and the need for God's help to overcome it. We're not meant to face temptation alone, but we have been given a powerful weapon in prayer to seek God's help in resisting the devil's schemes. And as we pray this prayer, we're acknowledging our dependence on God and our need for His guidance and protection. We're asking Him to lead us away from temptation 
and to deliver us from the evil one. It's a prayer of surrender and trust in God's faithfulness and help to help us in our time of need. So why not make this prayer a regular part of your life and cultivate a life of dependency on God? Let's turn to Him in prayer when we are faced with temptation and seek His help in overcoming them. Let us also be willing to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit and trust in the direction that He's leading us. Jesus teaches us to pray for God's help in this area, to ask Him to lead us away from temptation and to deliver us from the evil one. When we make this prayer a part of our daily lives, we are acknowledging our dependence on God and His power to overcome temptation and evil. Let's not underestimate the power of prayer in our lives. Let us make this prayer a regular part of our daily routine and trust in God's faithfulness to protect us from temptation and deliver us from the evil one. As we do so, we can rest assured that we are not alone in our struggles. God is with us and He also promised to provide a way out for us. So take comfort in this promise and trust in God's power to help you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for us. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit whom you have sent to help us and to walk alongside us, Lord, as we live life in this world. Father, we know that we are faced with temptations all the time, but we're so grateful that you have provided a way out for us. And Lord, we pray that you'll help us to cultivate this, this uh, relationship that we have with you so that we can help us to resist the temptations of the devil. We ask for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.